Hey guys, it's Adam from Tested. If you know me and you're watching my videos, you know how much I love spacesuits and you know we're about to talk about spacesuits because there's one behind me. If you want spacesuits for the movies, you go to FBFX in London. My friends, they built the spacesuits for The Martian, for Alien Covenant, for Prometheus and a bunch of other films. And this is a spacesuit we have not yet covered. And I'm standing next to Grant Piermain from FBFX. This is, Grant, the EMU from The Martian. Is that right. correct? Yeah, so it's a slightly overlooked when people always ask us about that film. Everyone is really kind of obsessed with the surface suit. The, the orange yeah, suit yeah, that yeah, Matt Damon wears. Suit. Yeah. But an equal amount of effort was lavished on these guys. These are the ones they use when they come to the rescue. Right. We see kind of Matt Damon kind of flying through space in one after he punctures his glove. You see a bunch uh, of the crew members the wearing this. And guys come out yeah. and they've got the kind of... Uh, jetpack thing, they come out and rescue him. So this suit was a collaboration uh, between us uh, and our great friend Robert Alsop, uh, who we did all the hardware for this, so the helmet, the backpack, mm -hmm. all the internals and, and that sort of stuff. Robert did all the brilliant work on these uh, soft suits, which oh. are really well engineered. Uh, it uh, looks incredibly, I mean, I've spent a lot of time with some actual NASA spacesuits, yeah. and this feels in volume and the, the patterning, it feels like totally, uh, it has total veracity, but I also noticed that there are a lot of ways in which it is subtly different than a NASA suit. So you guys weren't copying a, a, an actual modern day NASA EMU. No, so there were quite a lot of uh, drawings, a lot of concept work done. Uh, uh, obviously that involves Janty and Michael Mooney again, uh, and, and Ridley, uh, you know, Ridley looking at loads and loads of images of kind of different generations of NASA suits. Um, but remembering that this suit is, is a few years in the future. Right. So we couldn't really be slavish to, to what NASA are doing right now. So we've got layers of uh, space of fabric inside, which mm -hmm. is a kind of thick, breathable, lightweight fabric, but it gives it the real heft and- The volume. Yeah, and we've got and there's boning in there. So Robert and his guys did this most amazing job with that. It has its, and it also feels like it's quite adjustable. There's like, you can change, the, I feel Velcro in here, it can change size to an actor. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, Dan, again, because they're not really a fitted thing, yeah. there were two sizes done really uh, for the film. There was kind of like a smaller size and this size. Um, and, you know, there was a good range of sizes in the cast. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Matt, you know, he's a, a fairly big guy, but uh, then we've right down, you know, to, to the girls in the movie, um, Kate Mara is very small. Yeah. Uh, so, but the smaller size also fit the smaller guys in the movie. Right. So um, there's a lot of leeway. And in addition, you are also building functional cooling systems into here. Yeah, that's really important. <laughs> <laughs> because so, this one, more than even any others I've seen yeah. you guys make, this is going to get really, really warm in here. Yeah. So these guys wear uh, an underlayer, which is like a cool suit, which has when in between takes we can plug them in, circulates water around, yeah. cools them down. Uh, so uh, yeah, without that, I think you'd been in a lot of trouble in one of these things. So. I, and you're really like, I'm, I'm noticing, can I, am, I just wanted to, is this, it seems to me this is a Martin Baker ejection seat uh, buckle. Am I correct about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> again, you know, working with Michael and Janty, some, you know, they love to find kind of really authentic looking stuff. So rather than just using the same brand new shop bought buckles. Yeah. Uh, Everything gets modified a little yeah, bit. Yeah, um, finding old buckles, polishing Lightning them up, holes, adding, I see. adding different, yeah, exactly, holes and, and just changing them up a bit uh, just makes it just a bit more convincing. Is absolutely gorgeous, and it's really kind of has this big majesty that they. I mean, it's an it's a it's a NASA kind of heft to it that the other yeah. ones don't really have. Yeah, and again, you know, there's challenges with these kind of things because they all have to. All of these things are built for working on flying harnesses, so yeah. uh, so some of them just have hip harnesses, some on big spin rigs, and they have to have quite a lot of mobility in these. Uh, and obviously, you know, as a design, it, it can get very restrictive something like this. So yeah. you know, again, it's just down to you know, clever manufacturing, you know, that makes that really usable for stunt guys and the cast. I'm curious about the, 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 the fabric you're using. This is a really highly textured fabric. And I mean, for me, who makes my own spacesuit replicas, it's finding the right fabric that's easy to work with, but also looks really good is, is, a, is a challenge. You guys go through a whole bunch of different tests. Yeah, so, I mean, this is again, so Janty will often buy kind of hundreds of meters of fabric from all over <laughs> to show Ridley samples. And in the end, this one's actually 
pretty simple. It's, it's a cotton fabric, but it's just, it's got this really nice texture on. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it picks up dirt quite easily. So, oh, really? Which, which uh, gives us a little bit of trouble on set. But you can't really <laughs> throw one of these into the laundry. Uh, not easily, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, I, in addition, you guys have to make this lightweight because the actors are wearing it for long periods of time. Yeah, yeah. So this has some weight to it. I mean, it is inevitable, the helmet. You yeah. know, the castings involved for, for both the kind of visors in there have weight of their own. Um, also... Does this lift up? Does this... This one doesn't. That uh, one doesn't. I oh, think I it's see. actually... This is uh, something we've done so that we can light the actors to try and avoid the issue of big shadows under the eyes or dark spots on the nose. We right. kind of have a, an internal little lighting bar that oh, we can look, move that's around. Got, right, I see it's got LEDs um, on the inside. Often we'll hide it just behind the edge of the, the gold drop down. So very often on set, uh, they want to do a VFX replacement on a visor, so we have to be able to pop the clear ones out quickly. So this here will unbolt, um, uh, and the whole and the clear whole thing visor will comes pop out. up, and then that just goes back on, just as a you know. So the VFX people have got that to track as well. Is that a growing trend that they're removing the visors for the actors? Uh, yeah, I mean, more and more. I think like big yellow for Covenant. Uh, I don't think we really ever shot with the the visor in. Uh, oh. Funnily enough, which is a shame because it's a really beautiful casting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Huge amount of work went into it. But uh, I mean, obviously it's much more comfortable for the actors if it's not there and, yeah. and they're happy to put it back in. Martian, probably about 50-50 with visors in, visors out. The surface suits, if you look at them, you'll notice we, a lot of the detailing on the surface, the etchings, the stickers, they're actually designed as visual effects tracking markers. They literally are designed as little crosses oh. that help, help those guys sort of track and then even when we take the visors out, some of the bolts we used around the edge, we replace with little green head Allen keys so that they just work as tracking as well. Fantastic. Um, is there a day you foresee when you won't have to make a visor except for a display suit? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all part of it. I mean, the visors are a huge challenge. We work with a great company in the north of England called CMA Moldform. Uh, so we all very often design it, CAD it up, um, we send that CAD data to those guys. Uh, we, and they vacuum cast these in polyurethane. They're right. super strong. Uh, they, they're virtually impossible to break, wow. um, which is obviously really important. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and obviously the optical clarity has to be such that you don't get any distortion behind, you know, when the camera's tracking across an actor's face. Right. Um, which is really hard to achieve. Um, I imagine. So we do a lot of our own vac casting. All the rest of the vac casting for a job like this, we will do ourselves. This, we know when to stand down and <laughs> how let many, a specialist take over. How many of these suits did you guys make for The Martian? This, I think we did nine of these ones. Wow. So, uh, and as I say, it's nice to talk about it because it generally goes overlooked. As, yeah, uh, you know, for that not movie. by me, not by me. <laughs> I love this thing. Oh, Grant, thank you for uh, no giving worries. us a tour of the EMU. I really appreciate it. Thanks.